Welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to cover hair algae, how you get it, how to get rid of it, as well as what happens is you leave it within your aquarium. Now there are two main factors in getting hair algae in with your aquarium. The first one is excess nutrients, which are phosphate and nitrate. Now these two nutrients build up over lack of water changing, overfeeding and general lack of maintenance within the aquarium. Now the second issue is generally lighting. Now not all fish keepers have lack of maintenance within their aquarium, but still get algae problems, especially hair algae issues. Now this is generally due to leaving lights on for too long. Now depending whether you have a reef tank or you have a fish only system or you have a planted tank or a freshwater fish only system depends upon how long you have lighting. Generally as you have a reef tank it should usually be around about 11 to 12 hours ish depending on your reef. Different reefs have different times for coral and how they work the same with planted tanks planted tanks should generally be around about eight to nine hours of lighting um, but as you start to see build up of algae issues then you want to cut down on your lighting because that's when you know your tank has had too much lighting for fish only systems and both marine and freshwater fish only systems, the lighting should be on for no more than five to six hours a day, generally just during the daytime period of hours. Uh, at night time, the light should be turned off or switched on a blue color lighting. Now, in an aquarium, there's many ways of removing hair algae from a tank. Now, the first one is fish and invertebrates. Now, for a marine aquarium, generally snails, crabs, sea slugs, and algae blennies like the lawnmower and the algae blenny, as well as other various types of blennies, will remove hair algae from the aquarium, or at least some of it. Now, you can use tangs within a marine aquarium, however, tangs will not eat hair algae as it's too long. Now, within a freshwater tank, there's a lot more variety of algae eating uh, life forms than a marine tank. Uh, for example, American flagfish, zebra snails, otto sinkless, flying Siamese flying fox fish, as well as shrimp and plecos, and Siamese algae eaters as well. Now, some other ways of removing hair algae are doing water changes. Now, water changes in the hobby will be the antidote to many things in this hobby and algae is one of them could be just because they dilute the phosphate and nitrate which are the excess nutrients which the algae love out of the tank now you don't need to worry about it affecting plants and coral because generally plants and coral don't like nitrates and phosphates apart from plants will actually like nitrates but it's not too much of an issue especially if you have a dirty substrate and you also have dosing fertilizers. Another way of doing it is scrubbing the rock in old tank water. Now, obviously in a freshwater tank, you generally don't have live rock, but you do have ornaments. Now, ornaments can be scrubbed under tap water or RO water, just because they're not used in a freshwater tank as biological enhancers they're generally used for ornaments and decorations however in a marine aquarium live rock is generally used to house beneficial bacteria for the tank another method is treatments now not all hair algae treatments work but some hair algae treatments do work some are a waste of money some are not now i've never used hair algae treatments on my tanks personally however i've seen it done so if you want to go the treatment route, I would recommend you choose a treatment to use. Now, another method is turning your tank lights off. 
Dale, sometimes this is not plausible in a reef tank and a planted tank. However, in fish-only systems, there is no harm in turning the lights off until the algae issue is sorted. However, in a planted tank or a reef tank, the lights generally can only be turned off for 24 to 48 hours before coral and plants start dying off. Um, not all coral is photosynthetic though, so not all coral does rely on lighting, which is also a benefit to uh, trying to control algae within a marine tank. Now when you leave hair algae in a tank, you generally find massive problems. Not only can you not plant or add coral to tanks, but you will have issues with trying to grow those certain things and the appeal and look of your tank. Now, hair algae will grow and take over a tank if you give it half a chance. So it will outcompete coral and plants for lighting, which it will definitely do. There is no saying it won't because hair algae, given half a chance, will do that. So in a planted tank or a reef tank, it needs to be removed as soon as you spot it, just because it will take over rapidly, just like things like pest corals and things like easy to grow plants, which just explode given the right conditions. So not only will it not benefit plants and corals, it generally looks unappealing. Now, Algae has a good part, it will remove any excess nutrients, so stopping things like coral and plants, as well as fish, from dying off. Not particularly plants, but coral and fish, it generally will help survive, generally because it, it's a nitrate exorber. So sometimes it does have benefits, but in the main display tank itself, it will wreak havoc. And it generally looks unappealing because your tank generally doesn't look nice with it. So for any more information on hair algae, visit the comments section down below and I will answer any questions on hair algae. So thanks guys for watching. Don't forget to s follow the sponsors to the channel down below, which are BB2 Marine and Cheap Frag Facebook Forum. So thanks guys for watching and I will see you in another video. Also don't forget to check out my new series over on my channel which is the reef update series. So to go and follow that series click on my channel, go to videos and follow the series there. Thanks guys for watching.